Thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who do not know me yet, my name is Tarek and I'm going to be your host for tonight. Uh, with me is Ahmed. He's one of the youngest, most enthusiastic ethical hackers that I know around. And uh, he gave this talk not too long ago at a conference here in Dubai. Um, but today he uh, decided to join us as well and give us the extended version of this really interesting topic. Uh, so uh, I'll let him introduce himself and uh, get started. Uh, welcome, Ahmed. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you so much, Tarek. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Ahmed Atallah. I'm a cybersecurity analyst at Malcro. I'm also like a year two student in uh, the American University in the Emirates. Uh, I study network security. Um, I'm the founder of CTF.ae. CTF.ae is the uh, local CTF provider here in the United Arab Emirates and the first... Uh, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. You're not your screen, screen. If you want to share your screen, please feel free. Or, yeah, let me share the slides here. Can you see my screen? Yes, now we can. Sorry, no go worries. ahead. Yeah, I was introducing myself and uh, we came to CDF.ae, which is the uh, CDF provider here in the UAE uh, and the uh, security community. Yeah, I have a couple of certifications in the uh, field like OSCP, etc. cetera. Uh, enough talking about myself. Now let's get started into the uh, details of this uh, demo. So today we'll be demonstrating a really interesting attack. It's like a, a type of phishing attacks, which can be really stealthy, which can be done without getting caught by an antivirus or without getting caught by the Windows Defender, etc. We're gonna try it. Latest uh, version of Windows 10, which is totally patched version. And we will see how it goes. So this is the demo scenario. We're going to start with the attack use cases. Then we're, we'll move to the crafting the malicious files. Then we'll set up the SMB hash capture server. And then we'll move to the scenarios that can be used to transfer the file administrator. Uh, later on, we'll be doing, we'll be opening the malicious file from the administrator's uh, PC. Then, of course, we'll be able to crack the hash and then we'll pay, play with the password. Let's move on to the uh, use cases of this attack. So yeah, we can use this attack that we'll be seeing, of course, for internal phishing. For example, you have a red teaming engagement or a pen test, and you want to send, uh, and you want to, for example, you want to grab the hashes of the administrator or maybe the domain admin. So uh, you're going to send out a phishing email that includes a malicious file, but this uh, file only works internally. It can be external phishing, of course, but in case that the outbound SMB access is allowed, which is, I believe it's it's very rare nowadays to see. So yeah, most, most of the cases, it will be uh, internal phishing that you're sending a file internally to someone. And once he opens the file, you get the hashes of that, of that computer, of that host. Uh, yeah, let's move on. So now we are going to start with the demo. We're going to uh, craft a malicious file. So what basically happens in this step, we're going to use a tool. It's called NTLM theft. And we're going to craft uh, a PDF file and inject in it, uh, maybe call it maybe a macro, call it uh, a malicious command. Uh, so basically, this macro or command, what it does, it sends when, when the victim opens it on his PC. Uh, it sends out an SMB request to the uh, attacker's machine. So this SMB request, it contains the hash of the uh, host, of the uh, victim host. We will see actually uh, what does this mean in details. First of all, we should install this uh, tool, which is NTLM theft. Of course, I have it installed. Uh, let's let's run the command. It's it's Python three, of course, and uh, the tool. And then we're gonna use minus minus generate flag, and we're gonna generate a PDF file. Uh, of course, this PDF it's not only about PDF. Of course, it can be also Excel file, can be a Word document, the doc document. It can be uh, what else? Maybe RTF file, maybe TXT file. But 
for this demo, we're just gonna go with the PDF file. Yeah, and then we're gonna use minus minus server flag uh, and give it the attacker's IP address, which is our own IP address. I will just show it up now in a minute. And then we're gonna use minus minus file name and give it any name for the PDF file. Let's move on. Let's, let's apply this here. Now we have our Kali machine here. Let's uh, just go to the tool directory, PLM. Uh, yeah, let's say Python 3 ntlm theft.py. Let's say minus minus generate PDF minus minus a file name. It was minus minus file name. Yeah. Let's say, for example, uh, Havoc Invitation. Mm, yeah. Okay, so it looks like there's an error. Ah, I forgot the minus minus server. Let's provide that flag, minus minus server, and our own IP. Let's check our own IP from here, from a new terminal. fconfig. This is our own IP. Let's copy it and paste it here. Okay, so as you can see the command here, I believe it's ready now. It should generate a file called Havoc Invitation. It will be inside the directory with the same name. Yeah, it says generation complete. LS Havoc Invitation. Yeah, we can see it here. CD Havoc let's see how we can see it here. Okay, so this is the first step. We have created the uh, malicious file. We have injected, uh, of course, this is being automated by the tool that uh, injects that malicious command to send us the SMB request. But all in all, the step is done. Let's move on. What's next? Uh, we need now to set up the SMB hash capture server, which will receive the uh, SMB request, will capture the hash. So here we have two options. Option one is to use Responder, which is a very famous tool for uh, LLMNR and uh, all these network attacks. Uh, so we're just going to use it today as a hash capture server, as an, as an SMB hash capture server. This is just for today's use. Uh, the second option, which is Metasploit, we can use this module, which is uh, Auxiliary Server Capture SMB. We can we can go with Metasploit uh, module, but personally, I would prefer to use Responder since it's more famous to get this job done. Uh, okay, uh, you need to install, of course, Responder.py, which you can see in GitHub. It's, it's free for use. I have installed it. We just need to run this command. So let's fire up a new terminal. Uh, let's go to responder directory. And let's say Python responder.py minus i is zero. Now we're asking get to listen for any uh, requests, SMB requests coming on this uh, network interface, which is is zero. It, it might vary, of course, depending on uh, your uh, your network adapters, your setup, etc. Let's run it and see. Okay, looks like it's working. It says listening for events. Now it's gonna listen for any uh, SMB requests coming. What's next here? We have done this step. Let's move on. Now we need to send the file to the admin to the administrative machine. Okay, so in this case, uh, as we have discussed that we have internal phishing uh, scenarios that can be done. Maybe one of the scenarios that you're gonna talk to the HR and you're gonna send them a PDF file. Uh, maybe you can send an Excel file, an Excel sheet to the, uh, to the finance department and they, then makes sense for them to open the Excel sheet. And once they open the, the sheet, you get the hashes 
there is like tons and millions of scenarios that you can think of to get this file downloaded by the victim host. But for this demo, we're not digging deep into the phishing scenarios. We're just gonna download it manually uh, on the victim host. Okay, so let's let's host the file that we generated recently. Let's say Python minus n sample HTTP server. And let's host it maybe on port 8080 because I know this port is not being used now. Okay. Okay, now we're, we're, we have this file being hosted on port 8080. We just need to access it using uh, our IP address, our uh, this IP address on port 8080. Here we have the Windows 10 patched and latest version. Let's open the web browser and browse to the IP address to download the file manually. It's loading. Okay, here's our IP address and here is port 88. Yeah, as we can see, some of the uh, yeah, even this, even these requests are being poisoned also by <laughs> by responder. It's a very evil tool, to be honest. And we can see the uh, yeah the requests here coming. Okay, uh, now I believe we just need to download this file. Let's have an invitation. PDF. Yeah, it will open up here. Of course, it will, it will just say PDF document. You can customize it later. I mean, if you, if you want to customize it to look uh, real, or maybe you can just uh, put your own invitation here. You can customize and edit it, and it will still work. Let's save it to the desktop, maybe. Uh, yes, save. All right, now the moment of truth. Let's try to open it using the PDF reader. PDF document, it's, it's totally normal, normal behavior. There's nothing malicious about it. Uh, what do you want? Adobe product improvement program. No, thank you so much, cancel. <laughs> thank you, Adobe. Um, yeah, so this is very generic, nothing malicious. Doesn't even look malicious, no pop-ups, nothing uh, looks malicious. Now let's let's move on to our attacker machine and let's see what happened in the uh, responder server. There is that zoom, zoom toolbar, which is very, very annoying, yeah, okay. So here, the uh, responder, as we can see, there's the hash that was captured captured the SMB request which was sent by the file. And when we opened the file, we got the hash of the administrator. It says administrator here. This is the user, desktop. This is the machine name. And this is the hash in the NTLM v2 format. All right, so until this point, everything is going well. Now let's stop uh, the responder, Halas. We don't need it anymore. And our next step, I believe, is to crack the hash. We're going to use Hashcat to crack this beautiful hash. Um, all right, let's let's move on to the logs directory of, uh, of Responder because uh, it stores this hash to be ready to get cracked. Uh, yeah, you will see it in this name format. It says SMB and TLMV2 uh, and the IP address of the compromised host. Uh, yeah, let's use Hashcat. So Hashcat, we can just use minus H to, to know the, the command of Hashcat. I have the command here ready, but uh, let's just try to find what where is the NTLMV2. Why, why we're gonna select 5600. I just want, want the stuff to make sense to you guys. So I'm gonna go through it. Uh, Slowly. 
Okay, so as as let's just use the list command maybe. Oh, hashcat minus h list. Let's just start it from the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so it says um, hashcat minus minus hash type. This is the format, and uh, yeah, it uh, you should provide it with the a number. This number is the short form of the hash uh, type. So, for example, we are search we're searching for maybe MD5, uh, MD5 will stand for 950. Maybe we're searching for NTLM, it's, it will stand for maybe 4600. So now we know that we're gonna use minus minus hash type and provide it with a number. So now let's just uh, search what is the actual value for the NTLM V2. Let's just grab for NTLM. Yeah, NTLM V2, it's for 5600. Zero, zero. This is the short form for NTLM V2. Okay, that, that's why we're going to use this command, which is hashcat minus minus hash type. Minus minus hash type, it can be replaced with minus n, but we're just going to use the long format to be clear. And the, uh, the value which we got here for net NTLM V2, which is 5600. Zero, zero. And then we're gonna provide it with the with the file of the hash that we wanna crack, which is SMB. Yeah, this this one. And then we're gonna select the word list to crack from. So there's like tons of word lists that can work actually, but uh, we're gonna use the most famous one, which is Rocky.txt, as all of you know. For for me, for me, it's located in slash user share. Word lists, rockyou.txt. This is the default for Kali Linux, uh, rockyou.txt. Uh, fingers crossed. And let's run the command. We're going to wait like for maybe a couple of minutes. And even if the password was too strong, it, it shouldn't be cracked. So, so cracking the password is like maybe uh, maybe one out of out of 20 possibilities. But uh, hopefully we were lucky this time to get the password correct. Yeah, as we see here, it says correct. And this is the password of the administrator. This is the cracked hash. Password, enter now. But like this, this password uh, is strong. This is not uh, a weak password. As we can see here, there's like a capital letter. There is a special character. Uh, number, small characters, and also the length of the password is uh, uh, is not bad. But yeah, fingers crossed, we cracked it. <laughs> uh, let's let's get to know this password uh, anywhere here. Uh, let's just say, uh, for example, this is we have the host, uh, we have the username, and we have the passwords. So for the user, what was the username? It was administrator, right? Okay, let's copy and paste it here. For the password, this is the password. Let's paste it here. And for the host, for the IP address of the uh, uh, of the uh, host, so at spawn. 72.16.187.133. Okay, now uh, we have the uh, username, we have the IP address, we have the password. Uh, what can we do next with these with these givens? Now let's play with the password. We can use PS exec to do some evil stuff without uh, without grabbing attention. Another interesting thing that we can do is to RDP into the machine. To save time, to save demo time, we're not gonna use PSExec this time. We're just gonna go with RDP. We're gonna remote desktop uh, the machine and see uh, if we can really control the uh, machine with the administrator account. So what? We're gonna use now. We're gonna use X free RDP. X free RDP. 
slash v, which is the uh, IP address. Slash u, which is the username. Just copy paste that from here. Slash b, which is the password. Let's also copy paste it. And uh, fingers across the game. Okay, it's it's working. It's logging in. Yeah? Yeah, as we can see here, the administrator account is saying welcome. Here's it. This is the uh, actual screen that we left it open. Let's save it. No, just don't save it. Uh, let's move around. Let's do anything. Maybe open CMD. Oh, are you search, seriously searching those for CMD? <laughs> Let's, yeah, just open CMD, man. Yeah, here's it. Uh, who am I? Who am I slash bro? Yeah. Okay, it looks like, uh, yeah, this is the administrator account. So, yeah, we have successfully logged into the administrator machine, and now we have full access, and we have successfully compromised the administrator machine. Uh, yeah, I believe this is it about the uh, show. Uh, of course, you, you can do a lot of more uh, interesting stuff using the... Uh, uh, the crack password or even the hash itself, you can do pass the hash, you can do a lot of more interesting stuff. Uh, you can do lateral movement, you can do like tons of interesting stuff with such uh, attack scenario. Uh, this is it. Uh, thank you so much, guys. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm free for questions. Thank you so much, Ahmad. Very interesting demo indeed. Um, there are a few questions that came in, so I'll just uh, throw them at you one by one. Um, can you just explain a little bit, because you went a little bit quickly uh, over the tool and how the tool is used. We didn't really um, see a little bit of explanation on what does the tool do under the hood? How does it work? So maybe uh, if you can elaborate a little bit more on this, that would be great. All right, so yeah. I don't have a lot of theory to, uh, to show today, but let me try to explain it in simple ways. So basically, uh, there is something called SMB requests that are built in Windows. Uh, this is like a Windows feature, which is uh, the SMB protocol. It uses the SMB ports to communicate with other machines in the network and for like tons of other purposes. So, um, it can also be used for, like, for example, if you're sending, what is it called? The DNS requests. For example, you're sending a DNS request, which is not known by the machine. So at this, at this point, the host, the, uh, uh, the Windows host, it sends out the hashes to say that, OK, use my hashes and try to access this machine. So in, in today's show, in today's uh, demo, what we're doing, we're, we're not doing DNS requests. We're not doing uh, LLMNR, network attacks. We're, we're just doing something very simple. We're generating a file. We're generating a PDF, Excel, or Word document. In this demo, we use the PDF file. And we're asking the tool to inject, let's say, to inject a macro or to inject uh, a malicious code. And this code, what it does when the victim opens the file, it sends out a DNS request with the hashes of the victim. So that's why when the, uh, when the victim opened the, uh, the, uh, the PDF file, we got the hashes when we listened to the SMB protocol. Mm -hmm. Here, we're not waiting for it to do the authentication. We're not, we're not asking it for anything. We're just 
we're just injecting that uh, command. Like for example, you're saying that it will it will ask for the resource and it will provide the credentials. But here, no, we're just giving out the command. We're we're injecting the malicious command inside the PDF file. So that once the victim opens the malicious file, the command gets executed as a macro or uh, as an uh, Adobe uh, macro, etc. It depends, of course, uh, on the file type, but the concept here is that this tool automates it for you. It automates the process of injecting the malicious code, et cetera. So once the victim opens the malicious file, it sends the, the victim's machine sends out an SMB request to the to the listener, to the uh, attacker machine. Got you. So uh, I guess that automatically answers the second question that came in. What is the difference between this attack and using Responder? Right, yeah. Actually, using Responder, it's like uh, there is like tons of uses for Responder. The most famous use for Responder is the uh, LLMNR and the uh, NTLM, uh, uh, sorry, the LLMNR and the uh, uh, the requests poisoning, etc. But but uh, uh, today we're using a Responder for a very simple usage, which is just using it as a listener not uh, for attacking, not for uh, network poisoning. We're just using it as a listener. It listens gotcha. for the, uh, it just listens for the SMB requests and uh, captures it. Got gotcha. you, okay. Uh, we have another question coming in because you mentioned that this can be used in an internal pen test if you're doing an internal phishing. Uh, we right. have a question that comes in, can this be used in, uh, on over one, which I would assume uh, is an external pen test, for example. Is right, that yes. Uh, actually, uh, it's, as we as, as we mentioned in the beginning of the uh, presentation, it's possible, but uh, there should be some certain conditions, which is uh, which is that there is the SMB outbound enabled. Like uh, it should, like for example, the administrator has the firewall allowing the SMB connections for outbound to be out for the internet, which is too rare to happen nowadays, of course. You know that. Yes, yes, okay. So uh, it would work if uh, the condition of SMB being allowed egress externally to the internet, then it would work, otherwise it would be used internally to try and steal hashes. Right, yes. Got it. All right, uh, we have another question here, and the question says, uh, how do you mitigate this, or how do you protect against these kind of attacks? Okay, so basically, um, okay, this question is very good because you know this tool. I want to show you something. I, I believe we have time, Tarek, right? Yeah, we do have some time. All right, so uh, let me just open up the uh, the GitHub repo for the tool that we use today. I want to show you how many file types can be used for this attack, not only PDF. See, 20 different types of hash theft documents, including .url, .uturon, .inf, uh, desktop .ini, uh, .xml, .docs, .excel, uh, .m3u, .pdf, .txt, .application. So, it's it's actually based on uh, uh, on the version of your applications. For example, the PDF files, the demo we have done today, I believe Adobe is gonna uh, release updates to fix this. Actually, it's not a vulnerability. You know, it's it's not a vulnerability more than it's a functionality which is being abused by us by the hackers. So I believe Adobe is gonna release. Uh, some patches to uh, to patch this functionality to be more safe. And regarding um, regarding the Excel documents, the Word documents, the Office documents, anyways. So far, there are no no action no action use of like patches to such such functionalities or let's I don't know I don't want to call it a vulnerability actually. Because it's not a vulnerability, but uh, but yeah, there are no updates from uh, Microsoft to patch such thing. So it will it will stay there for like a while, maybe a couple of months until we see a patch for this. Uh, right now we can we can actually 
do the same thing uh, using a docs file and uh, an Excel file if you want, if, if, if you want guys to see it, uh, just raise hands if you want to see it. I don't mind. I guess it's uh, w when you are able to perform this kind of attack by sending an internal phishing or you delivering something to the administrator, then the possibilities are many, really. It's not just about stealing hashes anymore, right? So mm -hmm. maybe we'll see a patch for something like this. Maybe it's not because it is fundamentally about you trying to trick a user into performing an action that they're not supposed to perform. Right, so once yeah. on the PDF, they open it, they click on the document, they open it. And then it could be that you're using this tool. It could be you're installing or, uh, you know, uh, you've put it in and out of macro. Um, so patching these kind of things might be a little bit tricky. And it goes back, I believe, to uh, how you would configure the environment. So maybe you would disable macros. If you're not disabling macros, maybe you're blocking SMB. Uh, if you're not, not blocking SMB, maybe the administrator is not uh, supposed to be locked in as the administrator to start with. Um, because uh, so, Ahmed, there's a question from me, actually, now that I'm saying sure. this. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you have this or not. Uh, would mm -hmm. this attack work on a non-admin user? So would you yes. still run the code and steal a regular user's hash? Yes, actually, the answer is yes. Uh, the only reason I, uh, I used the administrator account for, for this demo was that I was, go uh, I was about to use uh, PSExec, because PSExec works only if the uh, user is administrator. But since uh, just to save time, we didn't do P PS exact today. But uh, other than that, I, I would have used the normal user to demonstrate such attack. It will work on any type of user, administrator or non administrator. Excellent. Excellent. OK, we have another question asking how to customize the document. Uh, is that mentioned in the manual or in the uh, help me or the help, <laughs> help me in the help file of the tool? Um, not really. It's not mentioned. But uh, you, you should try. I, I mean, personally, I didn't try. <laughs> yeah, okay. I personally didn't try. But uh, um, try and see how things work until you, uh, you get it done. So I, I would guess here the element of customizing the document might help a little bit. And in case the administrator ends up opening it, maybe they wouldn't get as suspicious, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. in any whether it's customized or not, and the admin or the user, any user opens this document, then it's a little bit too late because the, the hash is already stolen, regardless yes. of how the document looks like. Uh, so in a pen test exercise, it's, it's game over, basically. You've done what you're going for. Maybe in a red teaming exercise, uh, customizing the document will help out a little bit more. Yes, so you will prevent the alert, maybe? Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Perfect. Uh, I think we have one more question, which is a little bit more of a generic question. And uh, it's asking, can we learn this skill from our courses on Hackers Academy? And uh, the answer is for this particular one, you don't have to uh, get any of the courses because we will be publishing this on YouTube, the Hackers Academy YouTube channel in a few days. Uh, but you will, if you want to sign up for any other courses, of course, please feel free. There's a ton of other the skills and techniques and tools that you will be learning as well. Uh, uh, shall I add to this point also, Tarek? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so today, man, actually, <laughs> it's okay. So actually, uh, I want to just mention that this is this is not a skill. It's it's more about using a tool and understanding the concept. And I I personally have seen the Hackers Academy courses. They explain the concepts very well for beginners, and they know uh, how to get the uh, uh, how to get the uh, information inside your head. So they will give you the basics. And once you have the basics, you will be able to understand such concepts easily and alone. You don't need to, uh, uh, to see people doing that. You can just open GitHub, search for any tool, understand what it does, and you can use it by, on your, by yourself. That's a very good point, Ahmed. Very, very good point. And that's something that uh, I believe Hackers Academy always emphasizes. Don't focus on the tools, focus on understanding the foundations, the focus on understanding the principles, what is happening, and then the tools will really follow automatically. Perfect. I think that's it. Uh, we had a ton of very interesting questions. Thank you for everybody who asked these questions. Uh, is there anything else, Ahmed, you would like to add before we wrap up? Thank you so much, Tariq. Uh, I really enjoyed the talk today, and I hope uh, everyone also enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Ahmad. We really uh, are very grateful to have you here today.
thanks for all our attendees. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be recorded and uh, it will be posted in a few days on the YouTube channel of Hackers Academy. Thank you so much for our attendees and uh, we'll see you at the next Havoc, which is going to be in January. Uh, so if we don't speak between now and January, I wish you all happy holidays and a very happy new year. I hope and I think everybody hopes here that 2021 is going to be a little bit better than 2020. So <laughs> we'll be best for the new year. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon.